All right, so we are in Indianapolis, right outside the Vogue Theater. I'm joined by Doyle and Alex. Um, guys are on the road supporting Ab Abominator. Um, a couple things came up with uh, tours in the past. You're finally out on the road, able to support it. Um, How does it feel to be able to finally support this record? Great. Fucking, uh, so we put a lot of work into it and a lot of work into the band, getting it where we wanted it, and uh, fucking still a lot of work to go. But uh, it's good to be out there playing these songs for people because this stuff was meant to be played live. This is live music, right? Here. It has a good live feel to it when you sit down and listen to it, too, which can't wait to finally see it live. So I've been waiting ever since I heard it for the first time. It's going to be awesome. We wanted to make something that like would translate into a brutal fucking like a balls out live show. Awesome. And we did. <laughs> You guys uh, did some headlining dates earlier this year. You guys are just recently uh, started on the road with Mushroom Head. Um, how has that been? Uh, musically, I, I think it fits really well, I think. It's, it, it's cool that uh, we get to expose some people that like you know, don't know about the band or don't know what we're doing uh, uh, into, into what we're doing. It's like, uh, I mean, it's like, Doyle's got you know fans all over the world, but a lot of them don't know that he's got a band of his own right now, or that we got a project going. So it's it's good to get out with some of these bands that are outside of that normal Misfits crowd and 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 let them know you know what's going on. You know? Cool. So Doyle, you got your own hot sauce out. Which uh, how did that how did that come about? How did that uh, that project surface? And what interested you about it? Um, this little Mexican Chihuahua. <laughs> you want a hot sauce? So we. Got it happening. Crack the whip. <laughs> how how hands-on were you with uh, with the process of deciding what yes, sprinkling in stuff? Nice. Um, you also have another hot sauce you're working on to be released later this year, I believe. It's called Abominator. It's to make your asshole whistle when you shit. <laughs> well, hopefully it makes that happen. So, um, what made you want to do a second? Was the first one just not hot enough, or uh, a bunch of crybabies think they're tough and want some hot sauce? So. <laughs> what he's got out right now is more of like flavorful. It's delicious. It's, it's just really like uh, us. But you know, everybody like you got these. Want to try it? Tough guys that won't like something. She'll try. Like, she like to try steamy it. hot. So I'd try it. <laughs> oh I would love to, but I can't have spicy food anymore. The, 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 this one's not that spicy. This one's just flavorful. It's delicious. The uh, the one he's got coming out was is the real hot. We had a little sampler, and we used to make people interview like uh, take, I saw, take a hit. Before I've they, seen I've seen a couple I've seen a couple of those. I saw one didn't didn't one guy just decide to start chugging just uh, <laughs> yeah people are stupid. <laughs> I think he was goaded on by you guys. We goaded. <laughs> Cute little doggy. It's a good boy. Whose dog is it? Your? Alex? Just making sure you don't get out of line. Goes for the throat. Yeah, goes for the throat. Watch it. Savage. He's coming back for the face. He's good. His name's Brutal. Fitting. Yes. <laughs> he latches onto your jugular. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Guards, guards, guards the bus. Make sure nobody comes up. Make sure the crazy fans don't get yeah. too Rip close. Apart. <laughs> so Abominator was out on your own label. Yes. So what? What really interested you it interested you about about making your own label? Was it just all the time you spent on major labels in the past, to working with those that you just want to do your own thing? Um, we wanted to keep all the money. Nice. Fair enough. So, um, unless the labels want to offer us like you know a lot of stuff we can't do on our own, like you know a bunch of good tour support promotion and things that that you know like that, it's like they really serve no purpose. I mean, he can do anything that a label can do as far as the distribution and. And uh, and everything. So I mean, unless one of them came with with a really good offer of That's something really he could do on his own, then it's pointless. It's really good, but really hot. <laughs> try some. So you won't be getting a vomitator then. <laughs> I'll, I'll, it's try, really, it, it's I'll try. It's really. I'll try. your asshole. I'll try a little you know bite. A lot of it, or you're a pussy. <laughs> uh -huh. Really kind of sneaks up on you there. Mm -hmm. Like the first couple seconds are, first are nothing. Couple seconds, then it's just like really sweet, or not sweet, but like like rich. That uh, the pizza I had earlier this week, I think, trained me for that. Pizza, <laughs> that's good on pizza too. Yeah. So let's go yeah, everything. It's, really good. it's a good sauce. Um, so your own label is is that more more work than being on a major label, or is it just as much? It's, or it's, a, it's more work, but so now you got to figure out what the fuck to do. You know, we're still figuring it out. So uh, we'll be talking to some majors with the next one. 
see what they want to do. You know? Speaking of the next album, I've seen in a couple interviews that at one point I know you just had some drum tracking left to do on it and a couple other things. Is it kind of where things are at right now or yeah, are we a little bit closer? Or? Well, we were going to do it right before we uh, came out, but um, the guy who was going to do the drums is his music. Someone passed in Spanish. Right. So he it's, it's, it's a great bunch of songs we got. Like a few of them were tracks that, that we left off of Abominator. Right. Some we added and reworked some stuff here and there. But uh, then we, we had some more stuff we wrote added to that. And like uh, I think it's an even stronger album than Abominator as far as like it's it's it's, it's, it's really diverse and and uh, it's just like it's gonna be a really great album when we get it done. Okay. But we're just taking our time and, and trying to do it right instead of rushing something. Okay. Yeah, we don't even have a name for it yet. So. Uh, that can come a little no, bit later. <laughs> it's like the whole band has been like, like, like just kind of trial and error, just like see what works with going. I mean, it's like he's been in the music business for you know his whole life. It's like you know, and I've done stuff here and there, but like, uh, it's like this is his first time doing really his own band, as his thing, you know, without say with anybody else, you know, and 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 uh, so we're just kind of trying to find what works best. For when was the moment that you knew that this is what you wanted to do for the rest of your life? Maybe a band that you heard, a concert you went to, that you realized, I want to play music for the rest of my life. The first show I ever went to, I was a little kid, and, and, I, and my dad took me to see Kiss when they were like the biggest band on earth. And nice. seeing fucking Gene blowing fire and spitting blood and all that bullshit, it's like fucking, I was like, that's fucking awesome. And then like growing up, like in the, you know, on these old punk bands and stuff, it was like, that was like an attainable thing. It was like, you know, it's like, you know, like you know, I, I was self-taught on anything I did, so it's like, you hear those bands and you're like, you know, these are amazing, but like, I think I could do that. You know, and it's like right. fucking, and, and that was what was cool about it. It was like fucking something you could get up and start a band jam and stuff. And uh, and then like, it is, it's, I mean, I don't know, it's like, like uh, fucking working with him, it's like, uh, that's like the 12 year old me would have been like, fuck yeah. So it's like, I, I mean, I do it, like like for him you know it's like fucking uh it's like i think we got something good going and, and uh i think we got uh, uh there's, there's legs to it it's got longevity so we're just getting started on that what was the question what was when was the moment you realized that you wanted to play music for the rest of your life and what really got you interested in doing that um, my mom got us interested in music actually she was a 50s kid and she had all 45s She was telling me that uh, back in the day, like like uh, when Flag and all them would tour, that yeah. she would uh, like help them out buy sticks and drum heads and all that shit, like take them to the city and stuff. Fucking great. Yeah. And then, uh, as soon as I realized that I wasn't like a, a super freak and I couldn't oh. play in the NFL, <laughs> what the, the lyrical content of your music is always very dark. What? What kind of drew you to that as far musically and made you want to mesh those two elements together the most? I just look at it as funny. It's like shit that I find funny. It's like, I mean, I got weird sense of humor, maybe, I don't know, but like, <laughs> fucking, uh, it's like, uh, it's just shit anybody thinks. I mean, it's like, like when somebody, like, pisses you off or cuts you off or does whatever, runs in your car, does whatever the fuck, it's like, you don't think, oh, well, that's terrible that that happened you think i want to kill that motherfucker i want to fucking bash his fucking skull and you may not act on it but that's what you fucking initially fucking feel those emotions and i think our music just is is that heightened like moment of extreme emotion like put down into a nice little fucking funny little like song you know and, and, and it's like that's what makes it universal that's what makes people like be able to fucking uh uh you know uh relate to it even if they're not so much into all the you know dark side of things they at least you know can understand that part of, of human nature you know? also what are you going to sing about fuck this flowers and rainbow <laughs> uh, true i mean there's a million motherfuckers singing about love and breaking up and fucking like whatever being sad you know it's like they don't need no more of that it's like fucking i mean it's like you know not everybody could do what we do you know we might not be able to fucking you know do some of this super technical, like crazy weird, you know, but the same turn of coin, those motherfuckers couldn't do what we do either. So, the new album, 
I don't know, it's gonna be you're you're using pledge music to fund that to work with that. I believe so. <laughs> Was that your idea? And how did the whole thing come about? And it's I a really cool know. concept. <laughs> We need money. Let's <laughs> well, Like I said, this is, I mean, he's been in, in business for, for years and years, but this is his first time like doing his own label, doing his own band. Like that's just you know him running the show. And we've got friends like Robin and and, and, and our buddy Bruce and stuff that are helping us out with it. And so really, it's just we're trying like trial and error, we're seeing what works, what don't work. You know, at this point, like uh, you know, we've never done this before, so we're giving it a shot. We're trying. You know, people say like, hey, give this a go, give this a go. So we're going to see. You know, try fans out. want more music. Walmart, stop stealing yeah. it. Point you gotta pay for it somehow. And you'll get it. You know? That's the thing, people know him all over the fucking world, but mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, this is still a DIY band. We're, we're, right. you know, he's doing it all out of pocket. He's doing it all like on his own. Like nobody's helping us. There's no label, no support. So, I mean, you know, it's like to have the fans say that just we believe in this project and we want more of it, you know, this is their way to help out and help us do it. Right. We want to make him pay for it somehow, too. Well, I mean, it's like, this is the kind of band that to do it right, you know, a big label or something would put a ton of money into it, but we don't have a ton of money, so it's like right. fucking, it's if like... If they wanted to do it right, you know, that's the thing, they like, take right. you and they bury you. Yeah, we don't want to do just a shitty fucking, like another fucking, you know, garage band. We want a, a big production, we want a big, you know, we want the albums to be something special, and, uh, you know, it takes money to do that, to pull it off, you know, it's like, and... and, and just in the modern world, that's just the way it is. And this is one resource we have at hand that it's possible, you know, to do it. Like, he's got a huge fan base. And so, you know, it, it's just a way of like, you know, if you want this, here's how you can help us make it happen. Awesome. So, you guys are playing here in Indy Night. Any, what's going on? I know the tour with Mushroom Head is just getting underway. What's, what do we got on the horizon after this tour? Uh, maybe more tours, finishing the album up? Yeah, that's, okay. that's pretty much the goal. So like, just keep playing new songs, new material, like, and, and, and to build this band up to be everything that we already know that it can be. And and uh, that's just the goal. It's just an uphill battle. Awesome. Awesome. Looking forward to the show tonight. Like I said, you guys, thanks for taking time tonight. Yeah, man.